What's up, Sooner Nation? Welcome back to the Sooner Surge Game Time Edition. Uh, if you are not subscribed to our YouTube channel, make sure you do that first and foremost. And like and comment. A lot of questions to ask, and we want your comments on this video as OU prepares for UCF, 11 a.m. kick, ABC, uh, 11 a.m. And, and Palace on the Prairie. And we'll start with some opening thoughts, Hunter. Give us your opening thought with this game. Uh, 11 a.m. kickoff suck. Not going to be able to get into the stadium until at least uh, at the earliest an hour early. Not happy about that at all. I like getting in there when the gates open. Uh, so 11 a.m. kicks, you would think those would be gone after beating the number three team in, on national TV, but I guess not. It looks like you have one next week. I'm going to have to assume you have one the rest of the way for OU. So that's my I spiel on uh, 11 a.m. West Virginia's 2.30, I thought I saw. I, I haven't saw that, seen that yet. So I, I, I thought I saw it's 2.30, but that may have been a, a false thing. But, yeah, uh, my key my, – my, my thought here, I would say, is, look, OU's coming off the bye week. Uh a bye week, I think, that was in a great spot for this team uh, after the Texas game and just the emotion that was involved with that. So I, I think everything's setting up well. Uh, you got the rematch of – not rematch, but the, I guess, reunion of Dylan Gabriel and Jeff Levy as they face UCF. There's that storyline. There's a storyline of a lot of people uh, want to see this defense again against a – uh, a very explosive UCF offense, uh, a team that has some speed. So there's really a lot to kind of look for in this matchup. Yeah, uh, you're going against uh, – right now they're a top five offense. Uh, I'm a little cautious on that, solely on you look at the resume that they have. They haven't put up as many points in games that they probably should have. You know, it was like Boise State, they only scored like 19 I think in that game, they're 0-3 in the Big 12 right now. Got blown out by Kansas, only put up 20 points, or 22 points, something like that, to a not a good Kansas defense whatsoever. Uh, a top five offense should light them up. But they got their starting quarterback back this week. So it's going to be a good matchup for the defense. I, again, I think OU's defense will not have any sort of uh, problems besides maybe a few busted plays. That's uh, kind of been the thing so far this year is, They've had the busted plays, but after they bust, uh, they do very well. They'll bend, but they don't break often. They, uh, they've they done very well of recovering in the red zone. Yeah, you, you're right with uh, the quarterback being back. With Plummer being back, that's really the only thing that makes this somewhat a little bit intriguing is because they're getting their starter back, and, and he's put up good numbers, almost 1,000 yards on the ground uh, last season. So we definitely know he can run a little bit. That's always – uh, something to look for uh, against OU's defenses. And you talk about the bust that they've had, maybe uh, something to look for. Uh, as we get to the next thing here, Hunter, let's talk about maybe keys to the game here. Talk to us about a key that you have uh, for OU to uh, go to the, and out of, come out of this game unscathed and uh, looking good. Uh, on defense, limit the big plays. You got to uh, Gus Malzahn. He's known for his offense, how – good it's been over his uh, entire career. Now he's at UCF. So you got to limit that. Uh, offensively, I think you got to run the ball. Uh, they, this should be a game where the first time all year OU averages five yards per rush. Uh, this UCF defense, a rush defense, is atrocious. They are 121st out of 130 teams in rush defense. That's awful. It's the worst they're going to face all year. you got to be able to build off of what they're going to give you. They're not going to be able – to stop the run, got to run the football. Yeah, I'm exactly on that train as well, Hunter. I think on the defensive uh, defensive side of the ball, uh, you talked about uh, talking about the running game for OU's offense. I think the defense for me always starts the key to the game is you've got to stop the run, and that's the quarterback run and their rush attack because any team that OU makes one-dimensional – it's scary what OU is going to be able to do, I think, in the turnover battle. Uh, I think they can uh, pick Plummer off. I think they'll be able to get to Plummer. The key, though, yeah. uh, the key is on, on, on the pressure. You can't, you, you've can't. got to stay in containment if you're blitzing on the outside or if you're coming up the middle because he can elude. He's got some speed, 
And that's one thing to watch for. That's a key in mind is the, is the rushing, but it's not allowing him to scramble outside because he does have speed and he can use his legs. And if that happens, then you start getting breakdown in the secondary and other things. But if you can keep him contained and force them into some second and third and longs, I do expect some turnovers uh, tomorrow as well. On the OU side of the ball, you hit the nail on the head there, Hunter. OU's got to be able to run the ball against a horribly woeful uh, UCF rush defense. But I would say I do not want OU to uh, get out of kind of what their identity has been. Yeah, exactly. uh, I, think, I, I think running the ball is great. It's going to uh, open up the play action. But I also kind of want them to see what they see what they do, what they've been doing. And, and and on offense, which is use the play action, use Gabriel a little bit with his legs as well. We know Gabriel's going to want to have a big game. We know Levy's going to want to have a big game against UCF. Yeah, uh, John Reese Pumley, uh, he's had some issues turning the ball over. I think he's only started in, or played in three full games this year. This is the first time in a bit he's been back, and I think that's why you look at UCF. They were 3-0. and and then all of a sudden, Owen, uh, Owen three and three in Big Twelve play now three and three on the year, so he's had he has a three to four touchdown interception ratio, so it's not great. Uh, definitely can force some things there uh, on the defensive side of the ball. You mentioned the uh, uh, being able to contain. I, I think after uh, you know Iowa State kind of uh, exposed some things on that end. Uh, Beck he was able to get out a few times. I know there was that Kendall Dolby. Miss sack that led to points, I believe, uh, in that Iowa State game. So I think stuff like that. OU now you have a week off, a week to pre- uh, two weeks really to prepare for this game. Uh, you have Texas in the rearview mirror now. So I think the stuff like that you're going to see improvements. Uh, Rondell Bothroyd has been great on the edge. Like he has been really, really good of doing his job there. And you mentioned the linebackers for a safety blitzing, and I, I think they're going to be able to get those contains. Uh, I think maybe a higher sack total than we've seen in a long time. Uh, the other interesting thing is UCF running the football. They're third in the country in rushing offense. That's very good. OU's rush defense has been really the strength of this team. They've been able to shut down the run. Uh, they held Jonathan Brooks, I believe, under 100 yards. Maybe had uh, eclipse it, but, I mean, Jonathan Brooks is – the best running back you will face in the regular season. And they did a really good job of limiting uh, his big plays to only a handful. Yeah, and you're right. Uh, OU's rush defense versus UCF's rush offense, something's got to win out there, and let's hope it's the sooner side of the ball. You also mentioned Kendall Dolby on that missed uh, sack against ISU. If you go back to that game, even one of their long slant routes, OU had Bowman and another guy right there in position to make the play, and they just didn't make the play. So really – uh, OU, I think coaches look back on that and say, we had the guys in the right spot, just didn't make the plays. But yeah. BV, if you've heard this week, has been very high on Kendall Dolby. He's grading out really well. He's not going to blow you away with the speed, but he's just always in the right spot, it seems. And he has been. He had the pick against Texas in the right spot after the Bowman just hammered down on the on the tight end. Okay, the other thing, is, yeah. yeah. The other thing, Hunter, is you mentioned the sacks. OU's coming off their best pressure and sack game of the season with five against Texas. So let's hope that trend continues as well. Uh, As far as the next thing, Sooner standout, Hunter. uh, Who is going to be your Sooner standout on offense and defense uh, tomorrow against UCF? I guess I'll just take the easy ones right here. Uh, Dylan Gabriel on offense. It's against his former team. Uh, DG is now second. Uh, and Heisman favorites right now. I think he's going to have a big game, kind of maybe be able to jump up to the leader uh, in Heisman contention, depending on how Michael Phoenix Jr. performs this week. But, uh, yeah, I think Dylan Gabriel is going to continue his offensive uh, success uh, against his former team and maybe even have the, his best uh, statistical performance of the year. And then on defense, I, again, I guess I'm going to take the easy one. Uh, Danny Stutzman, you know, uh, on his podcast, on the podcast of the Prairie, he was talking about being from Central Florida area, going to have a lot of family there. You know, his dad makes every single uh, trip to every game. He's watched him play uh, since he's been at OU. He's been to every game, including West Virginia last year when he was sick. Uh, still made that. That was that would have been a tough one to go to. It was a rainy day and not be feeling well, too. 
still being able to stick it out. So I, I think Danny Schutzman, uh, you're playing a team from where he grew up in that area, Central Florida. So I think he's going to, again, lead the Sooners in sacks and maybe kind of uh, have another performance to move him up on that Buckus Award watch list. Since you're going to go the, I guess, obvious ones, I'm going to take maybe two that are less obvious, but we'll start with defense. Uh, someone who probably coming off uh, his best game statistically, uh, someone who's probably bound and determined to make a lot of tackles tomorrow because of how good they are rushing the football. I think Jaron Canick had 13 tackles last game. Uh, yeah, I expect, that's correct. Yeah, I expect him to build on that performance. Uh, he's he's all around the football uh, lately, and I expect that to continue and him going to have – uh, Canick's going to have another great game. So I'm going to go with Jaron Canick as the Sooner standout on defense. And on offense, uh, I'm going to go with the guy replacing Andrew Anthony. I'm going to go with Nick Anderson. Uh, I think he's going to get a lot more PT, obviously. And, and I think he's going to do more than catch just touchdowns. I think he's going to probably have six to nine catches uh, tomorrow with a couple of those going for six. So, Two touchdowns, six to nine catches. That's kind of what I'm feeling with Nick Anderson. I think they're going to want to cement that uh, position over there with Anthony being out. And I got Kanek on defense. Now, Hunter, let's get into a hot take here. And I'll start with my hot take, okay? And then I'll go to you. But uh, I was thinking, my hot take, is it going to be Brennan Thompson filling in for Andrew Anthony on a reverse? And I thought about that. But, no, I'm going to go with maybe – Something even more shocking. I'm going to go with Austin Stogner getting a touchdown tomorrow. And I know that seems like, well, that's not that shocking. It yes, kind it of is. is if you base it on what's happened this year with Stogner. He did look – he made a couple of plays last time. Uh, looked like he was in, in a little more comfort zone. I, I, I'm going to say my hot take is Austin Stogner uh, scores a TD tomorrow. Yeah, I believe the only tight end to score this year was Blake Smith. Right? Yep. It's uh, SMU, I believe. Uh, I'm going to go with who I said my Sooner standout is on offense. Dylan Gabriel is going to have the longest rush of his career against this very bad uh, rush defense. You know, OU starting to establish this uh, QB run game with DG, and it's working great. He had 113 yards rushing in that uh, Heisman uh, moment performance against Texas. He had a 44-yard rush uh, in that game that was – Big at the time, OU wasn't able to get points because uh, of a missed field goal. But And then last year, if you guys remember, he had that 61-yard touchdown run against Nebraska. So something over 61 yards from DG this week. Nice. It's time. Let's have a score prediction. OU, UCF, what do you have, Hunter? Oh, man, I'm going to go OU – 55, uh, UCF 20. I think that was exactly what I was thinking, too. But uh, I think OU is going to hang half a hundred, as Barry Switzer would say. I'll go 52 uh, to 17, uh, the good guys, uh, tomorrow. And we want you guys to drop all of these answers, all your answers, here in the chat. That would be who your standout's going to be. That would be uh, your key takeaway or uh, key to the game, I guess you could say, and then also uh, your score prediction and hot take. Drop that in the comment. Listen, guys, OU has everything they want in front of them, okay? Every single thing, every goal they had in front of them at the beginning of the year is still right there for the taking. They have everything to play for. This isn't the week for a letdown. BV's not going to allow it to happen. They seem very focused, had great weeks of practices from everything we've heard. Uh, UCF, former former uh, team of uh, Jeff Levy and Dylan Gabriel. So a lot there. I fully expect OU to come out uh, looking great tomorrow at 11 a.m. So hope you guys uh, drop your comments here and enjoy the game. And we'll make sure we're on after the game uh, for a little YouTube live. Uh, so make sure you're subscribed to the Sooner Surge. Till next time, boys. Boomer. <laughs>